Jesus. Now, verse 30. And bro, you can help me with this right here. I want to deal with this real quick. This whole issue of uh, being black, because some people get so caught up and narrow minded in certain scriptures that they will make it into something that the scripture is actually not trying to communicate. Job chapter 30, verse 30 is not saying that Job is black. All right. Now, he may very well have been. But that's not the issue here. Don't major in the minors and get sidetracked. The expression here is not to make you say, oh, that's a brother going through that. That's a black man, the original man. Soul brother. No, that's not what it's there for. He said, my skin turns black. Now, somebody listen to that and say, well, he must be light skinned. Because you we we're gonna you know throw some people just gonna throw some race in the Bible, even where it's not even explicitly mentioned. And this is not the purpose of the scriptures, but I know a lot of folks are stuck on that because you look through the lens of the Bible now, even through the lens of the world you live in, and the philosophy of the Western world predominantly is white supremacy, it's race-based, not faith-based. And that's how a lot of us, no matter how pro-black or supposedly awoke you are, look at the scriptures now. You've let that philosophy infiltrate and pollute your theology. What does it matter to God that a person is black, white, or otherwise? Everybody going to spend eternity somewhere, either in heaven or in hell, no matter what color you are. The Lord ain't as petty as we are. But yet we keep trying to make the creator like the creation. And it's a disrespect to God. So here in Job chapter 30, Verse 30, the word used here is shakar. And the, the term here has to do with duskiness or someone being dimmed. So the blackness of skin ain't talking about melanated. If the man was black already, why would he have to say my skin turns black? No, it's talking about the condition of his body going through the uh, physical trial that he's going through. So he's saying that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually um, in a, a state of disrepair. All right, remember, the color or idea that we're actually black or white and things, these are constructs that are about 600 years old at this point in history now. This is not the biblical view or ideology. You can't put 2023's understanding on a man that lived probably in 2023 BC, almost 4,000 years ago. This is not how people think, All right? This is how we think today. And we keep trying to impose a modern day mindset on biblical mindsets from centuries and millennia ago. And you can't do that. All right. Now, there are several other scriptures. And what I'll do is I'll post them in the uh, chat and put them on the screen and I'll go over them real quick just to settle the question. All right. <laughs> About blackness. There's Lamentations, uh, chapter five, verse 10. All right. And then uh, Lamentation five and 10. All right. The scripture that's you, the verse, it says our skin is hot as an oven with the burning heat of famine. Now, that's what it says in the English Standard Version that I put on the screen. But in the KJV, which a lot of people read, it says our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. And the word used there is not the same word used in Job 30 and 30, but the word used here for black is the word kamar. All right? And kamar means to be deeply affected. All right. It doesn't mean necessarily melanated skin like we believe we are. And everybody got melanin, by the way. Just everybody have a different degree of it. But it's talking about a blackness produced by heat, sunburnt, something produced by being hot. This is what it's talking about. All right. This is Jeremiah writing in Lamentations. So he would need to tell black folks that they were still, that they was black. They already know they're black. The word is being used again, metaphorically, not being used to try to push race. 
in the scripture. Stop doing that. Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse number five. All right. Here's another scripture. It says, I am black, but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. All right. Now, this is a cool scripture because here the term used is the word again. Is this word is you had shakar or you had um what I say in Job chapter thirty and uh, Job chapter thirty and verse thirty, the word that was used there is actually uh, shakar. The word used here for black is the word shakor, and this does actually literally mean the skin, the color of black. All right, and so this now is probably. One of what I would say is two or three verses where skin color is directly made reference to. And this is Solomon's wife, the wife of his youth. She says, I am black but comely, O daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. She, so she's comparing her skin color to something that you can actually see is that color as the curtains of Solomon. All right. And then she does it again. Or she mentions it again in Song of Solomon of verse number six, immediately right after that. All right. And remember, this is poetry between a man and his wife. That the rest of the world will get to benefit from by reading. And so she says in the very next verse, look not on, upon me because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. And when I look at this verse, you know, it's almost seemed like it insinuates that there may have been some colorism among them, just like it is amongst us today. Where people had an issue, if you were too dark, you know, we still like that. Wicked. Wicked. But there's actually a different word that's used here in verse one, in chapter one, verse six, that's different from the word used in the verse right above it in verse five. And the word used here for black is the word Shekar Koreth. Shekar Koreth. And it actually means swarthy or blackish. So relative to how they judge skin tone, and for those of you who saw the presentation we did on the myth of Sub-Saharan Africa, um, Brother Moore brought out a wonderful point about how that even Blacks in Northern Africa, who we would look at and consider Black, they were actually at one time called white. And even when they come to America, because they come from the Arabian lands or nations, they still have to mark themselves as white, even though they're as Black as any of us are. And so again, these classifications um, can oftentimes be relative, all right, to the view of the individuals. And so even the, the Moors at one time were considered white. So then there's the other, another scripture I want to go to. Song of Solomon chapter five, verse number 11, all right? And here Solomon says, or it's said of Solomon, his head is as the most fine gold, his locks are bushy and black as a raven. So it's pointing out the fact again, the same way in which it was pointed out that his wife, all right, the love of his youth was a black woman. The same word is used here, Shakur, all right? So his hair is black. It's not dusty, it's not ashy dark or any of these other things, all right? But then there's another scripture, and this is the last one I'm gonna get to, because again, these are just answering questions while we go through it, y'all, <laughs> okay? Context is key. Most of the scriptures I'm showing you are all in the King James Version, because if you read this in another translation, it would use a different word. And that's because it's trying to give you a more clear context. So when you go to Jeremiah chapter 14, verse number two, it says, Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground and the cry of Jerusalem is going up. Now, Here's the question you have to ask yourself because, again, context is key, right? Jeremiah says, Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground and the cry of Jerusalem is going up. 
And here's the thing. Is Jeremiah talking about the people of Judah or is he talking about the gates that languish? Because you got to understand the context being brought out. Now, here is a totally different word from the other words, Shakar and Shakur and Kamar. Here, the word Kadar is being used. And the initial definition for Kamar, I mean, for Kadar is to mourn or to grow dark or be ashy dark. And that normally has to do, remember, a siege take, took place in Jerusalem. What happens when a nation is sieged or a city is sieged in ancient times? It's often what? It's burned. It's set on fire. And so here he's indicating basically the condition more or less of the gates and not necessarily the people. But even if you want to say this is more or less talking about the people, well, the people would be again in a state of what? Disrepair or persecution. Why? Because they've just, they've just, just been besieged. It wouldn't make any sense for Jeremiah, who's a black man, and everybody else in Israel who are black, for him to keep saying they're black. So this is being used metaphorically um, to bring out a certain point, all right? So I wanted to illustrate those points and bring those points out. 